Hello. Nobody is here, Mowgli. Mowgli thinks that somebody's at the door because I said hello. Nobody's here. In person. Hi, Smiley. Whoa, there are 28 people here all of a sudden. That is fast. Hi, everybody. Yay, all my usuals. You guys came on here so fast. Uh, Hi, Nilka, Natalie Crochets, yay, Caffeine, Logan, you're back. That's crazy. All my usuals. <laughs> Nilka, you said, welcome, Beat Bop. Is that Mowgli? <laughs> Hi, everybody. That's so cool. Holy moly, 33 people here already. Well, as you guys could probably see by the thumbnail that I just took 10 seconds ago, I'm knitting for the first time in since like Christmas. I made a couple like knit knitted headbands for Christmas. And then prior to that, I didn't knit anything since that like off shoulder funky teal top. And that was back in like September or October. So it's my first time knitting in quite a while. And uh, yeah, this is actually like only like my sixth thing that I've ever knit in my entire life, like my sixth project ever. So may the Lord be with me. Also, you guys can see my camera behind me. That's creepy. I'm not filming right now. I just kind of set it up over there. But yeah, as you guys probably saw in one of my like recent yarn hauls, I am currently in the process of pattern testing for the first time ever. I've never like pattern tested for even like a crochet before. Um, so it's been interesting. Not really any mistakes yet. Cross my fingers. I probably shouldn't have jinxed myself, but I'm having fun. I'm having fun so far. I'm pretty much working like on a stockinette stitch right now. So I can just kind of go in the round over and over. But my focus has been with trying to like blend colors as you're knitting. Obviously I know how to like do striped effect, you know, like you change out your yarn and then you have like harsh stripe lines, but whoa, there's 45 people. Hi to the 45 people here in the chat watching me just in my hoodie, just knitting. I almost said crocheting. Um, yeah, like I was saying, mixing colors, blending them. I don't really know like the proper technique. Like I know people have like some cool, crazy techniques and like how they blend their colors. And I'm sure you guys have probably seen like some really funky like knitted pieces that have so much color and like it's always changing throughout and it's not like striped. So that's what I'm trying to attempt right now. I tried like a couple weeks ago I tried watching like videos on YouTube literally to like see how people blend and there was like no tutorial on it um I know there's somebody on Etsy and for like six or seven bucks she has like a pattern like a written pdf pattern on how she blends because it looks so stinking nice did I mess up there no I'm okay um but I'm, I don't want to say lazy, but I just like want to kind of want to like figure it out on my own without having to pay for it. Like see if I can do it. So I've been trying like my own technique of like blending and it's going okay so far. It actually is kind of, I think looking how it's supposed to. So I will try to show you all, but this is all I have so far. So you guys can see I have like ribbing down here. And then I just started working on like a stockinette stitch right here. It might be kind of hard to see because of the shadows. Oh, that might be better. But can you guys kind of see like the different colors? 
right here throughout it. So far, I've only used three colors. I've used this white cream one like throughout this part so far. And then if you look really closely, you can also see like a light beigey tan color. And then obviously I have this darker like mocha brown mixed in. So I'm, I've only been using those three colors so far and I still have like three, three other colors that I need to touch. Yeah, three more. So I have quite a ways to go on this pattern. I can't say what it is so far. I'm sure you guys can probably just kind of guess by looking at what I'm making, but so far the pattern testing is going okay. And my blending is going okay. What? Yeah. Yeah, I like it so far. So maybe in this live stream, hopefully you guys will see me like change out colors. I don't know. I'm really just gonna be knitting. Um, I've been trying to do this thing you guys know recently where I don't spend too much time talking because I never get work done. It ends up just being like a whole hour of me like not working. And I am on a time limit for this knitted piece. So I have to get this done. But how is everybody doing? <laughs> Bernice or Julie says hi from Brazil. Hello. Hello from California. And then Bernice said, I'm having trouble with the balaclava. I was wondering if you'd see your Instagram DM or if anyone here has done the balaclava could help. What are you having trouble with? It would help if you tell me what you're having trouble with. Um, I, I check my DMs almost every single day. So I haven't seen anything come through from Bernice yet. But I'm assuming you're having a hard time probably like on the top part of the balaclava, like where you go back and forth across the top, but tell me what part you're confused on so I can help. Come on, scroll, scroll. Oh my gosh. Abby, Abby Couch said, is knitting easy? Yeah, it can be. Um, I've heard it go both ways. People who learned to crochet first say that knitting is hard and vice versa. I've seen people who've been knitting for like 19, 20 years and then they try crocheting and they're like, it's so hard. In theory, it's very easy. Um, like the first thing I ever knitted was back in high school and I made like a scarf and it was okay. It was, I mean, it was my first project ever. It wasn't terrible, wasn't gorgeous. And then I've worked on a like my second knitting project ever was literally that knit cami top tutorial that I put out on my channel a year ago, which is why it looks kind of rough because that was my second project ever. But if you kind of like look at it like that, literally on my second project, I was able to make a V-neck crop top. So in theory, it's really not that hard. Um, all you really know need to know are like a few basic stitches. And like I said, I'm currently knitting right now and this is only like my sixth maybe fifth or sixth project ever knitting so in theory it is easy it's just you just gotta like watch some tutorials on how to do it whimsically whatnot said hi i hope you're doing well super excited for the hook drop yeah i've been working so hard on those hooks. They're so much fun to make. Um, I actually have two sets of flower hooks drying right now, so I can pop those out later tonight, but I'm really excited. Um, I actually just did it this morning, but I officially took down my big cartel shop because that's like what I started out on. And if you guys are like beginners at like selling stuff, here I go talking and not working. I'm gonna talk and work. But if you guys are like beginners and you're trying to sell stuff, I do really highly, do really highly recommend using bigcartel.com to like open an online shop um, because they made it very simplified and you can customize your shop and like do certain things to it, but like to a limit. It's the thing with Big Cartel is it's very affordable. So I was, on a free, no, I was on a $9.99, so like a $10 a month plan with Big Cartel. So it's probably cheaper than any of the other shops that you've seen, like the other marketplaces, like the other ones are Shopify, there's Etsy, there's, what's the other one? I was literally looking at like a bunch of them. There's like 10 different marketplaces where you can sell your things, 
but none of them are really as cheap as like $10 a month. So I really liked Big Cartel. I did. But now that just my business is starting to grow, I've seen just other websites and I love how much they're able to customize their online shop. So long story short, I closed my Big Cartel this morning. And for the hook drop, I will have a new website. So I'm actually going to go with Squarespace. Jordan has Squarespace and he already knows how to use it. He's been using it for like three or four years. And a lot of other people on YouTube, whatever, recommend Squarespace. I've looked at a bunch of other ones, kind of compared prices and whatnot, all that good stuff. But um, where am I at here? I'm trying to see where I need to change color. I'll go one more. But yeah, so I'm back to the topic of the hook drop. Really excited. And when my hooks drop, they will be on a new website. So just in case any of you guys are like thinking, like in case, you know, I announce the hook drop and you guys go to my old big cartel website, um, it's no longer up because I canceled it. So I will be obviously announcing all that fun stuff this week. Um, Jordan and I spent like five, no joke, like five hours straight shooting everything because we had a bunch of like really fun ideas and like backdrops and just really like creative stuff. So yeah, this past weekend we took photos of the different hook sets and got really crafty with it. And he's editing them currently, all the photos. So like I was saying later this week, I think maybe even tomorrow, tomorrow or Friday, I'm going to announce the date that the hooks will drop. That way you guys have plenty of time. You know, it's not like I'm just springing on you like, hey, surprise, guess what? The hooks are open today. Because like I have mentioned before, there's only so many hook sets I can make in a week. So it's not like I'm gonna have, you know, like a hundred sets to sell. I'm gonna have a limited stock and I will, you know, if anything sells out or whatever, I will be making more hooks in the future weeks after the first website opening. Um, but just like for this first initial drop, there are going to be like a limited number of hooks. So I want to give you guys enough time, enough notice. That way you can plan exactly when to be like on the site because I want everybody to have a fair chance at purchasing them just because I've gotten so many, so many messages about the hooks and um, a lot of people that want these hooks, like I would say at least 50% of the people interested in getting the resin hooks are international countries in relevance to me. So yeah, like a lot of these people are from like Europe, um, mostly Europe. There's like a bunch of like outlying countries, but a lot of people in like Germany, France, I got a lot from Austria, I think one or two from New Zealand, um, a bunch from Australia, just everywhere else, also including the U S so you know, I don't want to just like, what am I trying to say? I want everybody to know exactly when the hooks will be available. That way, depending on time zones and whatnot, nobody's like left in the dark. Um, so yeah, I will be announcing that either tomorrow or Friday on the date. And obviously when I do finally post the hooks dropping, I will have the correct link to my new Squarespace website, which I opened last night. So it's still like in maintenance mode and you can't see it, but I'm really excited to start getting the new photos up. It's, I'm having so much fun guys, so much fun. And I've been all over Etsy looking at different ways to like customize these hooks. I've been looking at a lot of um, like the polymer clay slices. I need scissors, but there are so many fun, like inserts, like besides glitter, like fun, like things I can put into the hooks. Um, and just like different kinds of like powder and colors and like all this fun shit that I can do for these hooks. So I've been all over Etsy. I have a bunch of like stuff in my cart. I really want to make like, a lot of different types of sets um not to like spill the beans or anything but what am I doing let's go back let's go back to cream um some of like the really fun like polymer clay inserts I can put into like future hooks 
There's a bunch of like fruit slices. There's a bunch of like kind of like ocean, oceany pearl themed clay slices. Like there's, I can't even explain like what I've seen. Like other kinds of flowers, like heart insert. Like I can't even think of everything that I've seen. But if you guys like go on Etsy and search like polymer clay slices, there's a literally hundreds of like different colors and themes and shapes and this and that. So I've been I've been a busy girl looking at all the fun things that I can add for you guys. Um, and because I've already done obviously like the glitter. Hello, what's happening here? So not quite on the same page as the glitter, but I also saw um, something I'm like already dead set on is something called like, um, like color shifting powders. There's like, they're called like chameleon powders, but they're like mica pigments and they're like chromey, like chrome, like color chrome looking. That's what I'm trying to say. Color shifting chrome. And it's so gorgeous. I can already imagine it like in a hook. So right now I'm just switching out colors. I've been working with my like tan shade and my mocha brown for a couple rows. And now I wanna switch back out to my cream shade and my tan. So I'm just trying to like detangle and see what the heck is going on here. But there we go. But yeah, I'm just kind of like trying my own technique at blending colors. It's going all right. I think I have like my own, my own technique. It might be the same as like other people, but I have no, no reference on how other people do it because I tried searching. So I just kind of made up my own little doodad, you know? Yeah, I feel bad like talking about the hook so much because <laughs> I'm sure you guys are probably sick of it. I'm sure some of you guys are like so stoked. And then some of you guys are like, oh my God, she's talking about the hooks again. Yes. But there are so many ideas that I want to do. Um, and then even like, oh my God. Resin hooks aside, also I'm going to be having stickers. I'm going to be selling my stickers and they're going to be holographic. So that's really fun. Hi everybody. Whoa, 67 people are here. I should have put some makeup on. Amara, you made it. Hi. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Hi, Jenna. That's crazy. That's so cool you tuned in. I'm like sweating now. Now I'm nervous, guys. I should take off this jacket. That's so cool. Everybody's gonna be so freaking pumped <laughs> to see your name here. I'm actually sweating now. I should probably put on a fan. I literally have a blanket on me. I'm wearing a hoodie. I'm overheating now. But yes, Jenna, I'm knitting currently. I'm pattern testing for somebody right now. And it's going all right so far. I'm a little nervous just because I haven't made too many knit projects. And like, I really want to do this person justice. Like, I don't, I don't want to be the one that like drops the ball on the pattern. Everybody else, we're like in a group chat right now. All the people that have been selected for the pattern testing were all like in a group chat DM thing on Instagram. And like damn near everybody has submitted photos of like their finished sweater. And like we had a whole month to make it. So I still have like 10 days to get this done. But everybody submitted their photos. And I'm just like, oh, damn. Like I'm probably the second to last, if not like the last person to submit, to be finishing this. And I don't... I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> oh, Lavender, you said it's called fading and knitting. That actually helps. That might help me like search it better. Oh, I see. Earlier somebody said, hello, Beep Bop. And I didn't know what that meant. Somebody here is named Beep Bop. But you said, how do you stay motivated to finish a project? Honestly, for me, it really helps if you pick a smaller project because so you end up picking something like a big like men's sweater or a blanket that crocheting that even takes me a couple weeks like a sweater takes me like two to three weeks sometimes and at that point I get bored and if you get bored of your project you're gonna work even slower on it so my tip for like staying motivated is like try to choose smaller 
projects. Yeah, like a bag or like a crop top or a beanie. Those things work up so fast. You're like, you're going to see like your finished result. So like you're going to see it in the distance. You're going to see it like take shape and take form. Tell me why I'm sweating now all of a sudden. <laughs> Nilka, you're so sweet. I'm sorry. I'm like trying to catch up on the chat and I'm so terrible at it. But Nilka said, remember to like, subscribe, turn on notifications and follow Aaron on IG. It's funny because every time I record a video, I never remember to say that stuff. It's like, as I'm editing, I'm like, oh shoot, now I need to throw in like my handle or I need to like throw in like the subscribe button. Cause I'm never like, turn on notifications. I always just forget. Jenna said, hi friends. I literally, I want to say like 30 minutes ago, I just watched your new video because I was knitting and I was like, Jenna uploaded. And that sweater you made, I might have to subscribe to Domestica because I can't even imagine how you make that like circular wavy shape in knitting. I'm barely getting like switching colors down. I have yet to make shapes with knitting. I can barely even make shapes with crocheting. I don't even know what I'm saying, but I'm pretty sure that sweater that you just made too was, wasn't it on your like 22 things that I want to make video? I think it was in there and I remember seeing that. And then you got that thing done so fast. Like the time between you posting that video and then posting your video today, I feel like it hasn't even been two weeks. There's no way I could finish a knitted sweater that fast. It's insane how fast you can work. Whimsically Whatnot said, oh my gosh, Jenna, just watched your sweater video too. That's so cool. I love how it's like, like a, not like a small circle, but it's like so cool. I don't know, that like we each watch each other's videos. Like we all know who we're talking about. That's like the fun thing. I need to put my glasses on. We're struggling here. You guys are working on a beanie and a blanket. Trousers. What the heck? Jenna. So I can't say who I'm pattern testing for. I mean, I think I'm allowed to post on Instagram. But I'm currently making like a little like pattern testing video, which is why my camera's over there. So... She or they asked me not to post the video before the pattern's released, but this is going to be a vest. I don't know. Do you see it? I hope y'all see it. I mean, it's kind of just like the bottom portion right now. But thank you for saying that it's looking so good. I just started this surprisingly last night. I want to say it's been like two and a half hours or so, like just on the ribbing, just because I was watching... Um, uh, Ink Masters on Amazon Prime. Jordan and I, we like, I mean, he's kind of over it because there's so much like drama in the show, but we've been watching Ink Masters and I purely like watching that show because you get to see like really crazy, cool tattoos being made. And then you also see like some, some like rough ones, you know, like, woof. <laughs> it's kind of, but it's really fun to watch. So I was like absorbed in the show and then working on the ribbing and then probably about an hour and a half so far before I started this live stream. So here's what she's looking like. I'll show it off to you guys again because I know there's probably new people here in the live stream. But here is like my little fade technique. I don't, I hate like looking behind the project, but this is what she's looking like so far. I only have three different colors and I'm about, I'm just about about to throw in ah, this one. This is probably my favorite color from the whole stack that I'm working with. So I'm like throwing my yarn everywhere. So hopefully I can like add in this like pumpkin-y, rusty orange color. And I think that these colors will mesh really nice. The only thing I'm worried about, the only thing I also have, <laughs> and then me not knitting. <laughs> I do this every time I come on a live stream. I never get work done. But as you can see, I have like a very vibrant 
like neon, neon pink, like fluorescent pink. And I know the yellow is gonna go really, really nice. But when I bought all these yarns, I thought this was more of like, like a petal pink or like, a, I don't know, like a pastel rosy pink. And then I got this. This color is literally so bright. My webcam washes everything else out. Like, look at this, it's fluorescent, but I don't know if I'm gonna like this like hot, hot pink in my like earth toned sweater. But I don't, I don't wanna buy more yarn and I don't have time to wait for more yarn. So, I mean, I'm gonna add it in anyways and just like very, very sparsely. So, yeah, I messed up. This is like one of those few times that I should have bought backup yarn, like, like a backup color. Maybe that's what I'm gonna have to start doing. I don't think I've ever bought like a backup color. I've always been like very sure of what I'm making, like color choices. But I guess, you know, when you're ordering online, you can never really tell. Jenna said, thank you. OMG, do it. I was so intimidated starting, but the videos and pattern make it really easy to follow. Yeah, I'm, I've, it's funny because Domestica actually like reached out to me like a couple weeks back, just like telling me like about their website. Um, yeah, like they weren't like asking like for a sponsorship or anything, but they were just like reaching out and like, hey, have you heard of us? And I was like, actually I have. And I'm very tempted now actually to sign up for Domestica. I know all these like different like creative platforms. It's like each platform has different creators and obviously each person is making like really crazy unique things. And I feel like I'm gonna go broke if I sign up for everything. In case, oh, I don't, even, I don't even think, oh my gosh, I don't even think I ever like really announced this on my YouTube, but like several months back, like October, November, I started making a couple videos for a platform called Creative Fabrica. And I'm just now forgetting where they're out of. They're out of Europe, I just forgot where. Not Switzerland? Somewhere, somewhere over there. But I made a couple like basic beginner tutorials for their platform. And that like obviously makes me think like, what about all these other creators that are on all of these different platforms? And like, not even to say here, obviously this live stream is not sponsored by anybody. But recently I have legit been noticing on Squarespace, Squarespace, mm, on Skillshare. You guys know they've sponsored me before, but on Skillshare, I used to think that they only had like, like editing videos or editing classes or photography classes or web design classes. And then over the last few months, I'm sure they've had it for longer, but over the last few months, they have been adding different like genres of classes. And I like shit you guys not, they literally have like baking classes, like how to make bread and cookies and make dinners. They have like full on classes like that. And then they also have, um, they have sewing tutorials on there. There's this one lady I was watching and she was showing like how to smock and like create ruffles in like sewing projects. And I was like, wait, what? I thought like, I thought Skillshare was like, I don't know. I just had this idea that it was just kind of like photo, video, computer type of classes. And then all of a sudden I'm like, they got sewing and baking. You guys know I've been getting into plants. These are fake, by the way. They're my mom's fake plants. But I have been buying real plants lately and they have a bunch of like, how like indoor plant guide care videos. It's, ugh, I just, I get sucked into all these platforms because all these videos are so great and I just wanna watch everything. And then I wanna pick up new hobbies. Oh my God, you guys are probably gonna kill me. I'm okay, I'm gonna tell y'all something right now. So over the last few days I have been, I've been fighting the urge this really deep urge to purchase a tufting gun. And in case y'all don't know what a tufting gun is, it's like a mechanical or electric tool that helps you to make rugs or like wall tapestry. And like you feed yarn into the gun and it like punches into your fabric. And it's like super fast and speedy and 
pratatakala, you know? So yeah, that, you know, started off as a sewing, a sewist, if you will, seamstress, excuse me. Then got into the crochet, and then I got into the knitting, and then I'm like, am I really about to buy a $200 tufting gun off of Amazon? That's literally like the cheapest one too. I think that's the only thing holding me back from not starting this new hobby is that the tufting guns are so expensive. I feel like I saw a couple on Amazon for like, maybe like 175 or like 180. But I don't, I have no idea honestly what sparked this urge. I'm pretty sure I was scrolling on like Instagram, like the Instagram search or explore page. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? And then I was like, how do they make this? And I like went into the description and the comments. And then I realized people are out here using electric guns to make probably some of the like most creative home decor things I have ever seen but it's so expensive so I don't know I don't know <laughs> I'm pro I'm I guarantee you within this year I probably will buy a tufting gun but I'm trying really really hard not to like go crazy into something new because I will completely forget about everything else. So yeah. <laughs> Mel said that you just made your husband the beanie from my tutorial. You just learned to crochet last week and you're addicted. See, isn't that insane? People learn how to crochet so fast. Like I've said this so many times, but when I first learned to crochet, I think I just didn't have confidence in myself. And I also didn't have like YouTube or like social media to like look at inspiration. But literally for like 10 years straight, is that right? Yeah, literally for like 10 years straight, all I made were rectangles and squares. I either made scarves, which are a rectangle, or I made like baby blankets, kind of like in the shape of a square. And that's all I made. I didn't even make beanies, like for more than half of my life. And then it really wasn't until like, two years ago, like right before I started my YouTube channel where I was like, holy moly, you can make this with crochet? What have I been doing this entire time? Like wasting time, not making fun, creative things. And then here you are a week into learning how to crochet and you just made your first beanie. I'm jealous. Sarah Clark. Whoa, hi from France, Kira. Hi. My people, half of my people. I'm half French. Can't you guys tell? No, I probably just look Asian. I'm half Asian too, though. But my peoples, my peoples are from France. So hello. I am with you in spirit. Sarah Clark said, hi from St. Lucia. I hate to sound so um, airheaded. But where is St. Lucia located? Like, I don't understand how I don't know that right now. But please tell me, like, what region area you are from so I can get a better idea. Thank you for watching my videos and tuning in. I know we're on different time zones, so hopefully it's not too late where you live. Hello from Greece. Hi, Gina. Kristen. Kristen said, I want a tufting gun, too. Aww. Amara, yes, tufting looks so cool. Surprisingly tricky though. At least that's what I gathered from videos. Yeah, I mean, I don't doubt that it's as simple as just like, and then like you're done. I actually watched a tufting gun video, like tuft with me kind of video like an hour ago too. And she made it look so easy, but I knew, I knew already if I were to like jump into that, it would not be as easy as like loading the yarn, going, like, I'm sure I would be the one that runs into issues and like something jamming up or, you know, but definitely in the future, definitely, definitely, definitely want to do some like tufting things. Because I know that there, I know that there's like punch, uh, can I speak? I know that there's punch needling. Obviously, the main difference is that tufting goes a lot faster compared to like punch, punch punch you know 
So that's it. But there's just, it'd be so cool, like, not only to, like, make rugs and stuff, but to make, like, really colorful, like, like, abstract or, I don't know, another genre, contemporary. Like, just make really colorful, like, rugs for, like, your wall. Like, that's such an easy way to, like, take up space on your wall and add color and, like, character to, like, your workroom or your bedroom. Like, oh, my God. The urge, y'all. I shit you guys know. I was literally on Amazon last night looking up how much a tufting gun was. I guarantee you, if it was under 100, I probably would have accidentally bought it already so maybe maybe it's a good thing maybe it's a good thing I didn't do it but I promise y'all I am not strong enough to resist the temptations for an entire year I'll probably buy myself five or six months maximum and then y'all are gonna see me like tuft with me and you're gonna be like oh my god she literally blew all her money on a goddamn tuf tufting gun yeah. Just don't be disappointed in me when you guys see that, okay? Abigail. Oh, I'm like getting so, my thing is like running around, but Amara said, some designers are so talented looking at crafty, crafty intentions, designing intricate dragons. Ooh, that's too much for me. I need to start off with like, like a circle or like zigzags or a heart or like a peace sign there's no way I'm jumping in and being like hello in my first tufting gun video we're making a tiger coming out of a flaming volcano like there's absolutely no way I'm sure some people can do it but that's not I don't trust myself hello from Chile hi Abigail said working on my second top-down sweater from your tutorial Used Karen Latte Cakes for the first one and not using Loops and Thread. Yes, Loops and Thread. Super bulky for the second one. I've been loving Loops and Thread, by the way. And I think I also showed it in, was it my January wrap-up video? But I forgot that I started a Loops and Thread. It was like Ecolux yarn, beanie. But that stuff is so soft. I mean, I'm sure there's polyester in it. There's probably a bit of acrylic. Um, this is crazy. Yeah, I switched the yarns, y'all. I'm mastering my little technique here a little bit better, but the thing. Oh, yeah, I just really like how Loops and Thread has, like, an option for recycled yarn. That's the only time I've seen a recycled yarn in like a major, like a mass, nope, not mass produced, in a like big industry company. Is that what I'm trying to say? What are words? But yeah, I've gone to Joanne's and Michael's my whole life. And this is like the first time that I've ever seen a recycled yarn in stores. I'm sure, you know, they're all over the internet and whatnot. But yeah, but as for like accessibility, like just going to like your local yarn store and all that jazz, I have never seen a recycled yarn. So I really like Loops and Thread. I like that they're doing that. I believe it's like 65% recycled. So trying our best to not be like absolutely destructive, you know, on the planet. Hello, yarn. You're not doing what I want you to do. <laughs> Sucker, I got you. Why do you keep twisting? I'm trying to like, not tangle, but I'm trying to like twist my yarn, my two yarn colors as I go. That way, like, the order of the colors changes on the hook, on the needle. So that's kind of like been my impromptu technique but sometimes they don't want to switch places I was doing so well y'all before I came on this live stream I was like working away and then all of a sudden I've done like 
like 30 stitches, but it's okay. It's okay. It's nice to have some friends to talk to because y'all know being a, like a, just like a sole proprietor, small business owner. We spend a lot of time on our own. Like, you know, when we're filming, I'm home alone right now. And then when I edit my videos, I got to be alone to focus on editing. So it can be very lonely. And it's so nice to see like all of you guys just coming here to talk to me and watch me mess up on my knitting. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> A Mowgli rug, Amara. You're crazy. I mean, actually, no. Unless. That would actually be really cool. I know once Jordan and I move, Mowgli will probably be staying with my mom because I got Mowgli as her Christmas gift seven years ago. So I might need a Mowgli rug when we move because I'm going to be missing that little boy. I can't even think about it. <laughs> I'm dead. Jenna Van Beek. I've seen your name before. So thank you for coming back. Hello. <laughs> she said, hello, Queen B. I feel like Beyonce when you say that. There's no way I'm not Beyonce, but that's cute that you call me Queen B. I like that. Y'all, I need help coming up with a name for you guys. Like I know all these like different YouTubers have like a cute like fun name for like their family, their subscriber following. And I've been rattling my little, little brain here, trying to think of a fun, catchy nickname to give you guys. And I don't know. I've been calling y'all like my bad bees, you know, bad bitches, but y'all aren't bitches. So I say bad bees. Cause I'm Aaron B, but I feel like some of y'all don't get it. So I need help thinking of like a nickname to give you guys. But I like Queen B. I'm gonna start saying that in my videos. Your Queen B has arrived. Are y'all ready to work? I'm kidding. But look, y'all, I got down um. Is it called continental knitting? Or is continental when you lift your hand to wrap the yarn? Well, maybe this is English. I don't know. I don't know terms. But look. Look, y'all. You see this? Oh, you didn't see that. I got it down. So I'm a little faster now at doing like stockinette stitch just because I can like keep my hands on the needles. I like it so far. All right, pretty soon here, pretty, pretty soon here, I'm going to throw in that rust color because I've been staring at these earth tones for far too long. Another thing. I just, I look insane right now in the camera. Y'all aren't telling me my hair's crazy. I just filmed a hanging, hanging pot holder tutorial. Hanging plant, hanging plant holder. Hanging plant holder tutorial. That's a lot of words. I filmed, I filmed a plant koozie tutorial. So that's coming out really soon. And once I'm trying to do this thing where I don't start multiple projects at the same time because they all get pushed off and I'm not productive that way. So something I've been doing for the last like month and a half is only doing one project at a time. So once I finish making this pattern test item here, 
I'm gonna finally record a pillow tutorial. It's about time. It's about time. But I'm really excited for that. It's gonna be very simple and basic. And I think I'll get to use one of my one of my bigger, thicker resin hooks for that tutorial. Because I know a lot of people are like, I don't use, or like, what do they say? Like seven, eight, and nine millimeter crochet hooks aren't that common. I'm about to use one of those hooks for a tutorial. So you're gonna see what I use it for. But yeah, look at me, full circle, back to the resin. I'm still sweating a little bit. Back to the resin. I'm so excited. So excited. I also added a new color. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I added a new like colorway of the resin hooks. It's like a lavender pinky kind of color. And it was just for fun. And then I was like, oh shoot, these are kind of cute. So I will be having four different hook options for this first drop. And then I'm gonna get into the polymer clay and then I'm gonna get into the chrome color shifting pigments. <sighs> Crafting is so much fun. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's just like so many so many different hobbies that you can do. I'm obsessed. There's always something new to like learn. And unfortunately I have like the too much gene. So whenever I start a new hobby, I like go overboard. I can't help it. Okay. All right, all right, all right. We're starting a new row here. As you guys can see, I'm coming back to my little stitch marker. And I'm just gonna work a couple stitches just to get the row started. And then I can add on my rest color. So that'll be nice variation. I gotta say, obviously I do not knit very often, but like, it's so soothing. Just cause I'm so used to crocheting and then you start doing like something with two needles and like both of your hands and it's it's very satisfying. I don't know what it is about like a stockinette stitch. So satisfying. I know you can use, um, I always forget, a waistcoat. You can use a waistcoat stitch in crochet to get a similar knitted effect. That does work. Which color do I want to take off? Which color? Ooh. Let's. Let's take off the cream. So long, brother. Okay. I I know y'all probably think I'm like hopped up on coffee right now. I'm not. I am sober from the caffeine, but um. I probably should have prepared myself with some before I jumped onto this. Maybe not, I probably would have been too much. Definitely too much. Where's my dog? It's too quiet in here. Mowgli! Right before I came on this live stream, we played Frisbee in the backyard. So he was all panting and happy. I always try to like give him some like severe, like heavy duty playtime before I film or, you know, anything just so that he doesn't feel lonely. Like, you know, I, I burn him out on playing and get him all hyped up. And then once he's exhausted, I'm like, perfect. Now I can start hello, doing what I need to do. And he won't like interrupt me and I won't feel guilty. So he's probably, Fast asleep. I don't know. It's probably fast asleep on my bed right now. I'm sure y'all noticed the new little setup today. I never sit in this corner of the house. I think this would have had really good lighting 
before noon, but now the sun's going behind me and I'm getting like the whole shaded look. But if you guys have noticed, every time I film like videos and stuff, I'm always, I'm always like sitting on my bed and I noticed I just, I have really bad posture. Like I, the whole time that I'm filming and talking, I'm like having to sit upright and then, yeah. So I'm trying to sit in like a more comfortable chair for once. Ooh. Okay. Okay, Rust. I see you. See, it's like so, I, I'm like jumping around with like all my thoughts, but like as I'm looking at this knitting, same thing goes for like crochet. And again, any hobby out there, there's so many like things that you can do within like one, one singular hobby, which is why I get so like excited and obsessive about it because how do I switch it on here? Switch, switch, switch colors. Cause like, for example, all the things that I've knitted in the past has been from like one skein of yarn. So like one colorway or like the yarn might be like kind of variegated and colorful. And then now for the first time ever, I'm making something, switching out colors and just like seeing the result. And it's like, oh my God. Same thing goes for crochet. Like you can make one whole project of like a sweater or a crop top in like one color. And then you start like dabbling in like different fibers of yarn and throwing in different colors. Like you, I've seen some people make some really cool like tops and sweaters using a mixture of like acrylic yarn and then a whole section is like in mohair. And then they throw in some like eyelash yarn, you know, like that really like fuzzy, like fringy looking yarn. And it's just like, oh my gosh, there are so many things you can create and just for the first time ever, just changing out colors on a knitting project, I never thought would be this satisfying. And it feels, it feels right in my soul, you know, it feels good. Okay, okay. Well, I don't really have stitches to show you guys because it's just kind of like on the first round, but I added that rust color. I'm sorry, the sun is now behind me, but that is what she's looking like. It's a nice pop of color, actually. But I can't add too much of this or else it's going to be very overpowering. So I think like a majority of this, this project is going to have to be like in the beige, white, and brown. Or beige, tan, and brown. But this is a nice little, nice little accent color. Gosh. I should have played some music. Jenna, you said, I absolutely, uh, absolutely love having a lot of projects. Then I can change it up every night when I knit. That's honestly the way I've been doing it for a very long time. But then I notice I have the habit of like doing it too much where I'll start like way too many things. And because I'm only like working a little bit here and a little bit there, it takes me so long to finish like tutorials and stuff that I've been working on. So I've switched up like the last like month and a half to only working on one project at a time. So it's kind of like twofold. It's like, it's nice because I get that project done in a reasonable amount of time but it's like I'm staring at the same project for like a week straight, you know? But my my subscribers can definitely tell you I used to have like four projects going on at one time, but then I would just like postpone everything. I'm sure I will fall back into the trap ever so soon. Wow. <laughs> Jenna, Jenna Van Beek said, Jenna Phipps is in here. Hi, Jenna. <laughs> yeah, the rust color, I think, honestly, is my favorite choice out of all of the yarn. 
I really like like burnt orangey kind of colors. Ooh, oops. So this is nice. It's kind of hard to see again because like the lighting here is not is not the greatest. Can y'all see my baby photos up there? But to kind of give you guys a better, hopefully, idea of like what that color looks like, I'm gonna hide, but it stands out so nicely against these muddy colors. So I really like this, but as you guys can see, I don't think it can add, you know, like a bunch of rose, kind of like this creamy color. Like I think that's gonna be way too much. So I'll keep switching up colors and eventually I will find a way to throw in a little bit of this yellow. I feel like the yellow is gonna go a lot better. Like I can add more yellow, but I don't know. I'm just kind of, kind of winging it. I probably should have drawn out what I wanted, like the colorway-ish to look like, you know, but I just be winging it. That's okay though. All right. You guys, you guys hear how quiet it is right now? I can literally hear my clock ticking. That's how you know Aaron is focused. If you guys kind of see like what I'm doing here, you guys, like you'll notice every five or six stitches, I will kind of like check my work in the sense of see like what order the yarn is. So I kind of make sure that the colors are in the same pattern for too many stitches in a row, just because I'm really trying to figure out how to fade this nicely. So I'll do five or six. And sometimes honestly, the yarn will, change order without me physically having to do that. So that's nice. But sometimes I'll notice if I'm like on a roll, the pattern, like the order of the yarn on the needles stays the same for like 20 stitches in a row. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. Sometimes I'll switch up the order every three stitches or I'll go 10 stitches and switch it up. Um, but I wanna say on average, I like change the order of the yarn sitting on the hook, probably like every five or six stitches intentfully and then like I said sometimes the yarn changes on its own so that gives it like a nice effect it doesn't look like too planned out so far this is actually the biggest thing I've ever knitted too like the largest needle size I've ever had to use on a knitting project um right now I'm using seven millimeters and I think the only other size I've ever really worked with was fives. So it's not working up super fast, but not super slow. As Jenna says, the chunkier the needle, so much better because you can finish a project a lot faster. Instead of having to use like three millimeter knitting needles and sock yarn and just wasting away in your chair. So I'm pretty impressed, honestly. I've got, I don't know how many is that, like 10 rows? 10 or 12 rows in like the span of like an hour and a half. Cause I haven't really been working on it religiously while I talk to you guys, but it's nice. Nice to get some progress on this. Yeah, I'm hoping, I keep working on it a little bit today. And just over the next few days, I'll have it done. Maybe in like four days on and off because I have, oops, got to run some errands so I can't like really dedicate the entire day to making this, but. Coming up here. Finishing up our first row of rust. Now that I'm starting, excuse me, I burped. That's gross. Now that I'm starting like my second row of the rest, we'll be able to see 
how, oops, I can't talk and knit. It's very hard. I'll be able to see how the colors are meshing on the work. Because when they're just kind of sitting on that first row, like on your circular knitting needles, you can't really see how it's working out. But then once you start working rows on top of it, makes it a lot clearer. So, wow, I freaking love this orange color. Does anybody else get like, uh, you guys probably can't see, like a bruised finger from like pushing on your needles over and over? It's so, like take your stitch off the needle. Cause my finger's literally bruised right now. I've been doing it all last night and this morning. And it freaking hurts now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Ooh. Pleasant surprise. Okay, I like it. Very happy. I probably only work. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I might work a bunch of rows and have like a huge section of this orange. Think, oh my gosh, I'm already at an hour and we still have 58 people in here. Y'all are real ones. Seriously. I'm thoroughly impressed that y'all can sit here and like listen to me just like ramble for a whole hour. The patience that y'all have. You guys are so sweet. Everybody freaking loves Jenna. Everybody is so pumped that she's here. It's okay. I'm fangirling too, guys. It's not just you. Jennifer Hodge, Hodgson, Hodgson said, hey, hi, my name is Jen and I'm a yarnaholic. Hey, Jen. Welcome. It's okay. We'll work through it. There's worse things in life. Yo, there is worse things in life than spending hundreds of dollars on yarn. I mean, in theory, you know? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'll probably end up buying some yarn pretty soon, too. Hold up. Okay. Amara, you are incredibly intelligent like the amount of things that you know i'm like what how did she know that i don't what so apparently there's a way that i can turn on an option for like live streams where only the people who have been subscribed for at least one hour can chat during lives I'm speechless. I don't even know where to do that. I'll have to look on that because that's a very helpful thing because I've always noticed the start of my live streams. So good. So like the chat, the chat is so nice and friendly and welcoming. And then it's like the last 10 minutes that creepos come in and start saying creepo shit. And then at that point, everybody's just like, yeah, we're good. Like, we're out of here. And I'm like, yeah, peace out. I'm, I'm going to, like, I'm not blocking all these people. I'm out of here. But I'm definitely, I'll have to find a way to do that. I'm sure it's pretty easy. It's probably just like in the settings, but that is extremely helpful. Let me see. What's this? What's this? I don't have access to this feature. What does that mean? Kristen, 
Kristen Kennedy said, what are your thoughts of drops yarn? I've seen drops all over Instagram, all over YouTube. I personally, I don't think I have used drops yet. So I don't really have a, an opinion on them, but I've heard really good things and it looks really nice. But as for like having physically used it, I have not used it yet. I do know um, another YouTuber, her name is Tiffany Liu. And I've seen a couple of her videos in like the last few weeks and maybe like, like the last month. And she's mentioned, I've heard her mention the drops yarn and she really likes the drops yarn. And she's like gone back to it time and time again. So I don't know what video it is, but I'm sure if you go like search around like drops yarn review or even just go to like Tiffany's page and kind of go to her like search bar and type in drops. Um, I'm sure she has like a full on discussion about what she thinks about drops yarn. I'm sorry though, I have not, I don't think I've used it yet. Not to my memory. I think for the first time, I kind of caught up on, on the chat. That's nice. All right, y'all, I'm probably gonna sit here and entertain you with my fingers moving for like another, I don't know, three or four minutes. And then, and then I will call it a day because it's already been an hour. And I need to go run errands. I wish I could really show you what it's looking like, but because I, it, I don't think you guys will be able to see it, but I promise y'all will see the final result. I was about to say something and then I completely forgot. So if you saw my mouth open like that, that was weird. I'm sorry. Oh, I was thinking about like Instagram reels. I'm kind of having fun making them. I'm definitely not good at it, but I think I have like four or five reels posted on Instagram and they're really fun, honestly, to make because like for the most part, I try to edit some stuff like, okay, I feel like one or two of the videos, reels that I posted, I edited on my computer first and then I just uploaded whatever I had onto my phone and then edited like the rest of it in in Instagram in the Instagram app and then two of them I just like took a bunch of videos on my phone and then edited it on my phone so it's kind of nice like being able to edit like certain things on my computer because it makes it so much faster and then I can just send it to my Instagram app but I don't know why I talked about that but yesterday I spent probably like an hour yeah, like an hour, like filming two different reels, just getting like the clips for it. Cause I filmed like the first part of the reel like three weeks ago when I started that striped red sweater project. So now that I just finished it, I can actually like finish the second half of the reel, but they're fun to make. Like they're so, I don't know. It's kind of like similar to YouTube in the sense of like, you know, like you're making like a moving picture, like a motion picture, like a video, you know, it's not just like, you know, posting a photo on Instagram. I've done that, obviously. Everybody does that. So it's nice to have, like, a change of pace. I think that's what I'm trying to say is, like, I've only ever really posted photos. And every now and then, like, I'll post something on my story. But never really, like, post videos ever, like, on my Instagram page. And then now it's fun to, like, get into Reels. It's, like, it's like mini YouTube, you know? I don't know what it is. Like, I don't... Obviously my reels are not like the most highly edited and like most gorgeous thing that you have ever seen. Definitely not, okay? They're a very beginner. Let me tell you, I was working on some transitions. I was filming the reels and I was trying to do like clothing transitions. Oh my God, it's, it's harder than it looks, okay? Like it's not terrible, but it's like, you know, I'm doing these clothing transition clips and then I was trying to like edit them on my phone in the Instagram app. And I was like, the angle, the way, like it, it's kind of rough, okay? 
So, you know, I don't think I'm out here saying my reels are like some high quality YouTube video. They're definitely amateur hour, but they're fun. They're really fun. So I like to work on that. Like when I'm all done crocheting or knitting for the day, I'm like in bed watching Ink Masters. And then I'm like, oh, that's, let's get a head start and like edit this reel a little bit. And then before I know it, it's been like 40 minutes and I'm still editing it. And I'm like, oh my God, I was supposed to go to bed, but had too much fun with the, with the reels. Oh, and you know what, before I get going, I did have a couple of people reach out to me in regards to making like the resin crochet hooks. And they were like, can you make, like you should really make resin knitting needles. I'm all on board for that. The only thing is I have not come across knitting needle molds. So yeah, that's not the main issues. Like you can get crochet hook molds, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, private sellers, anything. And then I searched like high and low a couple weeks back because I really wanted to do knitting needles and could not find one knitting needle mold. I know if I get like the right products, I can take my own molds, like using my own knitting needles, I can take molds of that and then use those molds to make resin, but that's very tedious and I, I, I don't know. That's like, that's like double the steps. So if you guys are interested in knitting needles, like resin knitting needle sets, and you would like me to make that, and you know where to buy molds from, I'm all on board, but I haven't been able to find any yet. So in case you guys were wondering, because I had a couple people message me. Yeah. But I think right now I have, well, I don't even know. I have a lot of hooks though, ready to go. They're like literally completely finished and I put them away so that my house isn't like literally covered in crochet hooks, but very excited. If I don't lag too much today, I can probably, my phone just went off. I can probably announce the drop for them. This is how I'm looking at my phone right now. This is how you know you're a YouTuber because I got my camera right there. I was using my phone to record something else. So my phone is still attached and I can't see who that text is from. But that's okay. Um, I think it was an email. What was I saying? I don't know. I'm, I'm doing the whole ramble thing too much, guys. I'm sorry. But... Kaylin, Kaylin Garcia said, do you have any beginner knit tutorials? I do, I have one. I have one knitting tutorial that I would classify as a beginner because that I was a beginner when I made that tutorial and I made that piece. And again, that crop top that I made was the second thing ever that I knitted. So in my eyes, that is classified as a beginner. The only thing I will note is I have gotten plenty of feedback now about that video. And granted, that was like over a year ago. There's certain things apparently that I don't explain completely in depth. And I agree with that. Like, again, I didn't make the perfect video, so I apologize. I have gotten a lot of feedback on that video though. I wanna say like 80% of all of the comments are people saying how easy it was to follow, how they were a beginner and they were able to follow it. Um, people sending me DMs of the same crop top that they made. So most people, I would say like 80 to 90%, most people had no issue following my tutorial and they were able to make it. But I have also gotten a couple comments from people saying, you know, like, hey, you missed this part or you didn't really explain this part. So, um, you know, at your caution, I would suggest that video. <laughs> I should make a new one, honestly, but y'all know, crochet is where my heart is. Beep up. Beep up said, girl, don't ever say sorry for rambling on here. I love it. 
Thank God somebody likes my voice because. <laughs> and okay, yeah, last question before I go here. Ms. Denko, Ms. Denko, uh, will your crochet hooks be available for international? Yes. I was talking that over, going over the logistics. Yes. Yes. There might be a few select countries in general that I might not be able to mail out to just because of like, excuse me, the line, just because of like post office issue, is, issues. Um, but I was doing like a lot of research a couple weeks ago and most, most international countries apart, like international to America um, or like North America, they do allow shipping. I, like I said, I know a couple months back, my government said shipping wasn't even allowed to certain countries, but I was checking it a few weeks ago and it says that it was acceptable. So yeah, international shipping. I know a lot of y'all in Europe, a lot of y'all in Europe been messaging me and like blowing me up about that. So I was like, wow, okay. At first I didn't know if I should do international. I thought I would just, I might keep it to just um, like North America. But then I had that whole Instagram poll and like literally half of the people were like Germany, Austria, Australia, France, UK, like just so many countries. I was like, all right. So yeah, I'm going to get going guys. I'm going to keep working on this bad boy. Maybe I can show it off before I get going. I know it's a little hard to see. My lighting is garbage, but there's that rust color. So here she is so far. I'm loving it. I'm liking it. Y'all look at my stock in there. It looks so good. Okay. Except for right there. What happened right there? That's a loose stitch. Oh, no, it's not. It's my yarn. <laughs> Suckers. Look at that. It looks so good. So good. So yeah, that's what the rust looks like added in. I'm going to keep working. Go run some errands. Maybe take Mowgli to the park. Did he hear me? But yeah, I'm gonna keep working and get some coffee and be seeing you all soon. Hopefully I can do another live stream maybe this weekend. We shall see. We shall see. Working on pillows soon. Crochet hook drop this week. Announcement, hook announcement drop this week. Um, yeah, I'm excited to get the pillows out. All right, I'm gonna get going, guys. Have a good day. Stay safe. Drink water. I haven't drank any water. Drink your water. Y'all see my sticker? Drink water. Love you guys. <clears throat> see you soon. And Jenna, if you're still here, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.